Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. The cops then handed me a tablet to see my wife engaged in intimate act with her co-worker. Dear listeners, today we bring the story of a woman who not only cheated on her husband but brutalized her AP when she caught him cheating. Please show your support by hitting the subscribe button and share your thoughts on the story in the comments section. Let's start with the story. My name is Max and my wife is Linda. On D-Day, it all began with an unexpected call from the police, urgently requesting my presence at the station. Panic set in as I feared the worst for my wife or son. Little did I know, the reality awaiting me would be far more surreal and devastating. Upon arrival at the police station, I found myself confined to a room with sterile furniture and an air of tension. They immediately bombarded me with questions about a guy my wife works with, someone I hadn't been in contact with since a company Christmas party in December 2019. Confusion and anxiety gripped me as I tried to comprehend the situation, desperately seeking information about the well-being of my family. The relentless questioning stretched on for what felt like an eternity, leaving me mentally and emotionally drained. Just when I thought I couldn't handle any more, they handed me a tablet. What unfolded on the screen was a gut-wrenching revelation, a video capturing my wife engaging in an affair with a co-worker. The shock hit me like a sledgehammer, and I found myself screaming in disbelief within the confines of the police station. As if that wasn't enough, the officers went on to explain a disturbing twist to the tale. The man in the video, my wife's affair partner, had been subjected to a brutal attack earlier that morning. The details were gruesome, he was found in his driveway, beaten, raped, and set on fire. In critical condition, his survival was uncertain, hanging in the balance. Amidst the chaos, a paramedic checked my vitals, revealing the toll this revelation had taken on my physical well-being. After the shock subsided, the officers advised me against returning home, suggesting a potential connection between the violent attack and the affair. I'm left grappling with an overwhelming flood of emotions, trying to make sense of the profound betrayal and the unforeseen spiral of events. The foundations of my 12-year marriage have been shattered, and the path ahead appears fraught with uncertainty and heartache. The police dropped a bombshell, revealing not only my wife's affair but also that she was the one responsible for the brutal assault on her lover. The revelation that she wasn't the only one involved in this affair left me stunned. Frantically, I rushed home to find my son staying with our neighbors. We hastily packed essentials, clothes, his school laptop. With my gun in hand, we fled to my parents' house, 45 minutes away. The weight of the situation clings to me like a heavy fog, sleep has eluded me for over 30 hours. Desperation gnaws at me as my wife remains unreachable, her phone a perpetual voicemail abyss. The officer, who had handed me his card earlier, offers scant comfort, mentioning she's at the hospital with her affair partner. I'm sitting in bed, flanked by my son on one side and my .38 revolver on the other. My dad sleeps in a chair in the living room, a shotgun across his lap. The atmosphere is tense, and I'm grasping for any semblance of normalcy. As the hours tick by, the uncertainty gnaws at me. I'm lost, staring into the void of an unknown future. The very fabric of my 12-year marriage has unraveled, leaving me in a state of disarray. Every moment is a battle against the overwhelming emotions and the harsh reality that has consumed my life. Amidst the chaos, I'm attempting to recount the week that unfolded. My lawyer confirmed their ability to say and do almost anything, especially when not under arrest. The revelation that my wife wasn't at the hospital but rather in the psychiatric facility of the same hospital added another layer of complexity to an already bewildering situation. Waking up that afternoon, the world felt like a surreal nightmare. I reached out to my uncle's law partner, a family friend, seeking guidance in the chaotic aftermath. He rushed to my parents' house, and together, we delved into my options. Their entire law firm is now on my side, navigating both the divorce and criminal defense aspects of this nightmare. 
Suspicion toward law enforcement lingers after the revelation that they misled me about my wife's whereabouts. On that fateful Sunday, we managed to secure an emergency custody order and a protective order against my wife, extending protection to me, my son, and my parents. Our court date looms 60 days ahead. Monday arrived, and the police served my wife just as she was leaving the psychiatric hospital. According to her brother, she didn't take it well. She sought refuge with her parents for now. Despite the whirlwind, she hasn't attempted to reach out, and truth be told, I'm relieved. The woman I thought I knew is unraveling before my eyes, and I can't fathom facing her right now. With a heavy heart, I had to talk to my son. I chose to tell him the truth, age-appropriate but unfiltered. His response tore at my soul. His first words were a plea, please don't let mommy take me away. I probed further, and his heartbreaking revelation unfolded, my wife had been emotionally abusing him, threatening to take him away if he ever spoke up. The weight of my failure as a father hit me harder than any other blow. I shared this with my lawyer, who swiftly used my son's statement, my wife's mental state, and her recent psychiatric commitment to secure emergency custody. The next steps involve getting therapy resources through his school, and he'll start counseling after the new year begins. I'm drowning in guilt, feeling like the worst father imaginable. Our families, too, were thrust into the storm. Her parents reached out, asking to visit. I agreed, with a clear condition, she must stay away. Their visit was an emotional maelstrom. Apologies and tears filled the room. I assured them they would always be a part of our lives, regardless of what unfolds. My lawyers have been relentless in digging into the affair partner's background. His criminal record reads like a horror story, parole for drug offenses, past gang affiliations, and an arrest history that caused the printer to churn for a solid five minutes. He's still alive, but teetering on the edge of critical condition. The layers of this nightmare seem endless, and the road ahead remains shrouded in uncertainty. The law firm assigned an investigator who managed to get in touch with the co-worker responsible for driving my wife to the hospital. The co-worker spilled the beans, revealing that my wife's affair was an open secret around the office. This blindsiding revelation left me questioning everything. My lawyers believe that this workplace gossip is what led the police to identify me and my wife in the incriminating video. I'm grappling with the fact that our private struggles were apparently common knowledge among her colleagues. The photos from last year's Christmas party, capturing moments of joy and togetherness with my wife, now feel like cruel reminders of a facade. As I navigate this tumultuous sea of emotions, I realize that I'm numb. It's a surreal, dreamlike state where every word I say and every event I recount feels like it's happening to someone else. The pain is there, but it's buried beneath layers of disbelief and shock. How long does this numbness last? Is there a way to hasten the process of breaking free from this emotional lethargy? I learned from the police about my wife's affair on January 26, 2022. My son, thankfully, is doing better. Therapy, initiated in early January, has already made a noticeable difference. Conversations with his therapist unveiled the extent of the verbal and emotional abuse he endured when alone with my wife. He was silenced, forbidden to make noise or disturb her. Threats of being taken away, never to see me again, hung over him like a dark cloud. To empower him, I've provided him with his own phone, helped him memorize important contact numbers, and taught him situational awareness. We've practiced how to seek help and express when he feels unsafe. It's a process, but I see his confidence growing. Any suggestions on fostering his self-reliance further would be invaluable. As for me, Therapy has been a lifeline, offering a space to articulate my thoughts and feelings about the shattered fragments of our family. The numbness has dissipated, replaced by a seething ball of anger whenever I contemplate what my soon-to-be ex has put us through. This whole legal ordeal has become the scariest thing I've ever dealt with. 
My lawyer insisted on seeking temporary full custody and child support, which I didn't originally want, but it was deemed necessary. The order of protection for myself and my son was extended, providing some sense of security. At a hearing where neither my wife nor her lawyer showed up, the judge proposed supervised visitation. My son adamantly refused, prompting the judge to meet with him privately. The outcome was a mix of relief and worry. The judge granted temporary orders, mandated therapy, and a psychological evaluation for my son. Fortunately, his therapist has some affiliation with the court, easing the process. Yet, the prospect of my wife gaining any form of custody terrifies me. Despite her toxic behavior, the legal system can be unpredictable. My lawyer believes that having my son's therapist involved is a positive step, but I can't shake the fear. The affair partner remains in the hospital, and I haven't heard from the police since my initial interview. As for my soon-to-be ex, I deliberately avoided her calls. I have no desire to hear what she has to say after all that has transpired. The preliminary hearing for our court-appointed mediation brought a strange mix of emotions. Seeing her for the first time since the initial questioning was surreal. She looked drastically different, frail and sickly, a stark contrast to the woman I once knew. Petty as it may seem, her appearance brought a strange sense of validation. The proceedings were insulting, with requests for visitation during the divorce and shared custody afterward. The audacity to suggest cohabitation until the divorce is finalized left my head throbbing. However, the trump card was the prenup. Crafted by my late uncle, the founding partner of the law firm I'm using, it proved to be a masterpiece. It became evident she hadn't even told her lawyer about it. The shock on her lawyer's face was priceless. The prenup stipulates a clean 50 50 division of marital assets and debts, but our financial setup made this almost redundant. The adultery clause is another layer eliminating any possibility of spousal support if either party is caught or admits to infidelity. My lawyer reassures me that breaking the prenup is nearly impossible given its fairness. But the latest request from my soon-to-be ex's lawyer has thrown me for a loop a six-month postponement of official mediation while she attends an inpatient rehabilitation facility for substance abuse. People in my previous posts hinted at a possible substance abuse issue, but I brushed it aside. Now, my lawyer and I are deliberating on how to respond to this proposal. Before leaving the lawyer's office, my soon-to-be ex spoke for the first time, asking me to read a letter she'd written. My lawyer warned me to be cautious, calling it a potential snake, but I took it home and read it. The letter started with the typical cheated spouse platitudes, but it took a dark turn. My soon-to-be ex revealed that after a major surgery two years ago, she started abusing medication. Eventually, she resorted to buying them from co-workers, including the affair partner. When money ran out, she turned to sleeping with him to cover the costs. She hid this from me, fearing I'd make her stop. Now, she claims to understand the gravity of her actions, expresses remorse, and wants a chance to prove she can change for the sake of our family. Let me make it clear, I'll never reconcile with her. Our marriage ended the moment she cheated and mistreated our son. But, reflecting on her struggles, I feel a mix of anger, resentment, and a hint of sympathy. Yet, I can't shake the feeling of being an oblivious fool. How did I not see this unraveling right under my nose? I grapple with feeling like a failure as a husband and father. I'm stuck in a whirlwind of emotions, questioning if I'm justified in feeling betrayed or if I'm just throwing her away. The anger and resentment drown out any empathy I might have. Is it fair to treat someone fighting these demons with such disdain? I'm lost and hopeless, navigating uncharted territory. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.